Hey, it's Kevin Dewitt here. Welcome to another plugin knowledge session. In this session, we're going to check out uh, another component in the Isotope Ozone 8 plugin suite. And uh, this session is going to focus on the maximizer component. Now, obviously, we've been through the overview, we've got through the shell and various things like that. And um, in this case here, I'm actually going to show it to you as I can use it in the advanced version, which is as a separate plugin. Now, does this impact you directly if you don't have the advanced version? No, not really. Um, it would look pretty much the same, except it will be in the main shell if you don't have the advanced version and you can't separate it out. But the functions and everything else should be the same. Uh, there may be some other features in the plugins that are missing, but if they are, just keep that in mind that I am using the advanced version of this, so it will cover everything that you have, plus could be some more as well. So the Maximizer plugin is basically a limiter, and it is the one, one of the parts in ozone that's not multiband it is just purely single band operates across the entire um, song and frequency spectrum and it is the last thing you usually do in your thing other than applying a dither to your song to output in mastering now i'm going to show you it in a mix but i'm going to do it on the mix bus um, so it's basically going to be mastering as such so the point of it is, is generally to, to uh, get the volume of your song up to a commercial release level and apply a limiter on there so that you don't have any clipping or any unwanted distortion. Now, obviously, if you push your limiter too hard, you can get distortion, but it's a different type of distortion than it is from digital clipping where you go over zero. Now, I prefer not to push my masters that hot, but obviously the potential's there. So I will use this on all of my masters at the end of the chain, as I said, as a separate plugin, just to, uh, to uh, limit the song and to provide that uh, last little bit of volume increase. But generally, I'll actually boost the volume going into it, which... It's similar concept, except I'm not doing it with this plugin. This plugin is just doing the limiting itself. But we'll run through all of that and show you how it goes with this mix. So let's get into it and uh, see what we think. All right, so we've got a song here, and as I said, I have placed the ozone maximizer component on the end here of my chain on the main output bus here. Now, this is what it looks like in its separate entity, but if I actually bring up, just for people that don't have uh, the advanced version, if I pull up the full ozone, And you'll see here, we have the module version. Okay, so as you can see, it is identical. Uh, again, I have the advanced version, so some of the features could be missing from your version. Uh, it's not advanced. Uh, I can't really tell with this because I already have advanced, but... Basically, what you're going to do in this structure here is just have the maximizer at the end of this chain here to do the last little step. But the function should be the same as the individual plugin. So let's get rid of that. So we've got our shell as usual, and we've got some waveforms here that we can see different views. And we have our obviously our limiting function here and a few other little settings. Okay, so we've got a mode function here and we can switch between each of these modes. Now, 
each one of these will create a greater load on your CPU. So depending on what you're doing, and if you're doing a quick release version, you may want to go with one of the lower IRCs, or if you're doing your final one, you may want to go with a higher one. Now, they technically have a different quality and a different sound, but a lot of the time you may not actually really pick it out. It depends how good your ears are and how uh, much and what type of song it is and how impact it has. Okay, so IRC stands for Intelligent Release Control, and and, and the whole point of it is to be able to to boost your uh, song and limit it without sacrificing the dynamics and the clarity. That's the point of what this is supposed to do. And as I said, the different levels have different demands on it. So we have our first one here, which is IRCLL, and that stands for low latency. So it is actually the same as the IRC1, but on a low latency function here. So it's going to be faster. It's going to reduce the latency on your mix and, 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 and as such would reduce the CPU load. Now, to explain some of these, I am going to have to take portions of the manual and try to explain them that way because they are very complicated processes and they're not something that naturally you uh, even I, I don't understand necessarily and most people won't. So it's a bit of reading it, listening to it and just getting what you think out of it. So IRC1 is supposed to uh, provide intelligent digital loudness maximization by analyzing the source material and applying limiting in a psychoacoustically pleasing manner, reacting quickly to transients to prevent pumping and reacting more slowly to steady bass tones to prevent distortion. And if we look at the little pop-up, if we can get that to happen again, it basically states it's a smooth and thick limiting for a rich sound. And this one here is the same because, as I said, it uses IRC1, but in a low latency. Okay, then we go to IRC2, which is supposed to be similar to IRC1, but optimized to preserve transients even more so they sound sharper and clearer in the output signal, even when aggressive limiting is taking place. And if we look at the pop-up there, it says clear and sharp limiting to preserve peaks. So I guess the concept between the two here, IRC1 is giving you a smooth, thick sound. So the transients are probably being uh, trimmed back, knocked off a little bit. So that's where you get the smooth sound. And IRC2 is keeping those transients, keeping it sharp, clear, and and with as little impact as possible. Now, IRC3 allows for the most aggressive limiting by using an advanced psychoacoustic model to intelligently determine the speed of limiting that can be done to the incoming signal before producing distortion that is detectable to the human ear. IRC3 is very CPU intensive, it states, and produces high latency, especially at high sample rates. Okay, it also states that the IRC modes provides intelligent release control, hence the name. Uh, the release time is automatically varied depending on the audio material. However, it's stating that with IRC3 mode, you may also choose before between four different character styles which help you manage the limit of sound by constraining its release behavior. So if we actually select IRC3, you'll see we get a drop down here and we've got this pumping, balance, crisp and clipping. So clipping is the most aggressive style setting of IRC3 and may be used if you wish to slightly colorize your mix with distortion or achieve the highest degree of loudness with the greatest risk of clipping. So if you'd want to deliberately distort 
your mix in mastering and get some distortion, bit of crunch out of it. Just get that little bit of gnarly distortion in there. Then clipping is the setting for you. So with the crisp setting, we are setting aggressively constrains the limiter's release behavior and will favor distortion over any pumping. So again, we've still got some more distortion, but not particularly to the level of clipping. Uh, and then we've got balance, which constrains the release behavior of the lim limiter in a generally transparent way and should be suitable for most material. So obviously, if you don't understand what you're trying to get out of it or you, you're not deliberately going for any distortion or anything like that, but you still want to do some limiting very aggressively and get your volumes up there, then uh, balanced is probably a good setting for you. Pumping is the least aggressive style setting for ISC3 and does not constrain the limiter's release behavior. It can tend toward a slower release behavior and can result in pumping. Uh, it states it's a legacy setting and is behavior used in Ozone version 5.01 and earlier. So if you were an Ozone user earlier and you want to go get the same sound you had before from Maximizer, then pumping is the way to go. Now, one thing to note is that these numbers, obviously they keep counting up, they keep getting added every, not every version, but as versions go, you know, previous versions, it stopped at ISC2, then, then it stopped at ISC3, and now we're in ISC4. So ISC4 is supposed to take the previous ISCs and enhance it even further. So they've worked on it and come out with this new version for this Ozone 8, and it's supposed to use technologies by shaping the spectrum to further reduce pumping and distortion. As signal goes further over the threshold, the ISC4 algorithm limits frequency bands that contribute most to these peaks. This reduces intermodulation between different signal components. So as an example, given vocals and drums, this algorithm can be more selective about limiting the transients from the drums without causing the vocals to duck as much. When no limiting is necessary, the spectrum will be unaltered. So it sounds a bit like a multiband limiter, but they're stating that it actually isn't because a multiband limiter has a few bands set using crossovers, whereas Ozone's ARC4 algorithm uses dozens of psychoacoustically spaced bands in order to react to any type of audio. And then under that, we then get some styles again. So in this case here, we've got three styles. And we have a classic style, which is to provide general enhancement of the overall mix with a sound more reminiscent of Ozone's earlier limiting algorithms which is still being used by professionals today. We then have a modern, which is to provide general enhancement and life to your mix, but with greater detail and clarity than the classic style. And transient is optimized for maximum preservation of all transients, resulting in a highly detailed overall sound that may benefit some mixes needing added clarity. So lots of choices here to run with, and it's just going to be experimentation to what it gives you out of your song. And you may change the settings based on your song as well. You, you may have a default setting that you go with most of the time, but then depending on the song, you may alter these. If you've got vintage style sounds, you may go for one style, very modern, crisp, EDM, hip hop style. You may go for something totally different. Okay, so over here we have a threshold setting. Now this is what you generally will do with a limiter. And this is going to set the value that we want where the signal is reduced and also how much gain is applied. So as we pull it down, we apply more gain and create more loudness, but we also contain the level that the signal can go above. Now, they've also got a feature over here where we can actually 
set it to learn and we can set a target. So if we want to, as they've done here, set it to our song to target uh, minus 14 LUFS, if we put it on to learn mode, then it will actually adjust the threshold itself to try and get uh, uh, this value out of the song. And if we turn it off, then we earn full control of our threshold again. We also have a ceiling control here, and, th and this is the absolute maximum you want to set it to. Now, if you set it to zero, then your song will, will peak to zero and hit zero and can obviously sort of go over it the more you push it. Now, generally, you want to go lower because that allows some, uh, some intersample peaks to go over. And even they recommend, you know, a minus 0 0.3 at most. Uh, I generally go down to minus 1. So this is the maximum level that your song can play at. And this setting here is useful to prevent clipping on other devices. And especially when you start doing conversions to MP3s and AACs, etc. You know, having it right up here is going to probably end up in the results of distortion on certain devices and things like that. So that's why it's always a good thing to reduce it down to at least zero, minus 0 0.3 or greater. Things like the uh, Mastered for Apple, they refer to a minus 1 dB setting. So that's why I generally just sit around that range there unless I'm requested by the client to go higher. I will just target that because it's a nice safe thing and it's going to cover most things there. You can also turn on a true peak setting here, which is supposed to uh, to allow for and adjust its values so that there is no intersample peaks um, that are going to go over and create distortion there during the uh, digital to analog conversion. We can also uh, link the controls. So if we want to move them together, we can use that button there or unlink it and move them independently. We've got a character control here, which is used to uh, set the overall response time of the maximizer process, which is going to give you a slightly different sound and feel for it. So as it says there on the pop-up, it controls the attack and release times of the maximizer. So that's the default setting. You can have it go faster or slower, depending on your song and what you want to get out of it. All right, so we've got a stereo independent setting here, which is linked together by default, the transient and sustain component. So they're stating in the manual that this setting is linked so that it's... Uh, that it works similar to previous versions of Ozone with the settings there. And 0% there obviously is the default settings for stereo unlinked control. So the way they talk about it is uh, it's referred to limiting channels independently. So if you set them to 100%, you're independently limiting different, the two channels. They also state that using this, it's possible to achieve a louder output but it can also result in a narrow stereo image. Now, to avoid that narrowing effect, they then allow you to unlink the controls so that you can adjust them independently. So when you are set to non-zero, they are applying limiting to transient and sustained material separately based on a level envelope generated from a ratio of the individual channel levels and the entire stereo image. Okay, so the transient control here adjusts how the limiter responds to transient material across the channels. So if you get some very big peaks of transients, like drum hits, that sort of thing, it's going to respond differently with that. And then the sustain adjusts how the limiter responds to, this response to sustained material across the channels. So we'll have to see what that means there. And then we've got a transient emphasis control, which is disabled by default. And that 
once turned on, we then have an amount and adjusting the amount control allows you to fine tune the shaping of transients before limiting takes place. This could be useful for preserving sharper sounds like drums while still optimizing loudness. So if you start limiting and you're finding that you're losing some power in your drums or the, uh, the peaks of your drums, the transients have been knocked off, snare sounding a bit weak and disappearing, then you can use this control here to make some adjustments to allow for those transients to come through while still getting high limiting. We have our meters section over here. And then we have, as I said, two meters here. We're going to see one. Uh, we're going to see one here, which is the top one. It's the default. And that's going to show us how much we are reducing the uh, gain of the signal, similar to like the compressors, etc. And the other one is just the spectrum analyzer. So if we want to just have a look at the frequency spectrum of the song, we can look at it there. Okay, so we've got a song here, and without the maximizer, it sounds like this. Now, what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to turn off this brick wall limiter I have here so that we don't have that in the way. All right, so let's just turn the plugin on. So you can see we're doing absolutely nothing at the moment. This is our spectrum analyzer. So it defaults to ISC one. So let's just stick with that for the moment. And what I'm going to do is Let's just start off by bringing our threshold down. So you can see we're getting a little bit of stuff there, a little bit of transient stuff. Now let's bring the ceiling down and see if that changes anything. Lower we go, obviously, the lower the volume. So I'm just going to put it to minus one at the moment. If we turn the true peak on. So there's an obvious delay when we turn that on and I'm assuming what that means is it takes a lot more processing power and a lot more look ahead to do that. So it actually has to impose a uh, high latency and that's usually when plugins do those big pauses it means it's changing the latency settings and having to slow everything down and look at things in advance so uh, you don't hear the what it's doing sort of thing all right let's have a play with this uh, learn thing just for the sake of seeing what that does so i'm going to turn that on You can see it moving. If I change that value. Now, I thought it would be a setting that it sort of 
determined the threshold and left it there, but the fact that it keeps changing, um, yeah, I'm not really keen on that, to be honest with you, because I've already got my mix set the way I want. I'm not really keen that it would start uh, adjusting itself and changing the threshold to continuously try to get the LUFs to the LUFS to the right value. So that would be something I'd have to do and learn over time, but I'm probably not real keen on that one as such. I prefer to set a static threshold for the entire song because I've already mixed my song to be at the levels that I want. I don't want it to be going to adjust the variances between the sections of the song. All right, so let's, what I want to do is I want to try and get this uh, limiter to be very obvious. So I'm going to push this pretty hard. And then what I want to do is start playing with these settings here to see what they do. But they're the sort of settings that really are probably going to be more noticeable if we're really doing some heavy limiting on this song as opposed to some subtle limiting where I would normally keep it. You know, where I had it before, so let me just sort of show you an example. That sort of pattern there of reduction to me would be a little, that, that would be okay, I'd be acceptable with that. Uh, too much, you know, so I'm going to bring the volume down just so we don't blow our ears out, but I'm going to push this really hard. A picture like this to me would be uh, no way would I ever do that. That is horrible looking. And you are really doing some damage to that song at that point. So I would never do that. But in this case, I'm going to just because I want to see if we can get obvious uh, differences out of these settings here. So let's have a play with the attack and release and sort of see if we can visually and audibly he he see what's happening. So you can see by the picture the difference there. So it's as it's described and looking at the results there, it is doing exactly what it is. So it's basically the same concept as a compressor and you're changing the attack and release speed to it. So the faster you go with it, the more it's compressing, the more distortion that it's imparting as well. The slower you go, the smoother those things occur, but it also doesn't really release as such. It's, it's hanging on for a long time and it's not probably not going to give you the results you're after so that's something you can obviously play with there let's have a look at the stereo independence we'll leave it linked for the moment Now, I'm personally not hearing any major difference with this setting here. Now, it could be that the song doesn't warrant it, doesn't need it, whatever else. I'm not sure, but I'm not hearing it there. Let's have a play with the transients now.
so the obvious difference I hear there is with the kick drum. Um, I suddenly hear the kick drum coming out a lot more with this one here. So I'll just play it again. But have a listen to the kick drum. You hear it's quite squashed down here. So, and then at the top there, it was a bit too much kick drum to me anyway. It did it lost the balance with the song. But definitely something you could play there with if your kick drum is getting a little bit too squashed and it's losing the power that you originally had with it and the, the um, standing out of it, then uh, adjust this setting. Uh, probably not all the way, but, you know, find a nice spot there where the kick drum is still present nice and it doesn't but doesn't sound weird all right so let's switch through the irc modes now and see if we can hear a difference with these now obviously there should be no difference between these two here but um we Obviously, you can hear the delay when we switch over, so we're switching between low latency to normal latency. Okay, so the big difference as I hear here is it's basically as it describes, it's it's they've got it very accurate there. I hear that quite smooth. Uh, this one here, I hear the kick and the snare and a lot of crispness come out. The things are very present and transients are coming through very clearly. So I'll just switch between them again. Oh, let's go. Pay attention to the kick and snare. All right, so let's see with our next one here, and then we'll have to switch between the modes as well. Okay, it seems to be very subtle between the modes there. I'm not hearing major differences, very subtle differences. Now, maybe I'm not pushing it hard enough to really get anything out of it, but let's switch over to IRC4 anyway. Oh, let's go. Down. 
Again, subtle differences between those. Uh, it's hard to sort of hear the big differences with that delay there. Um, I guess the best way to really analyze the differences between these would be to bounce out the song using each one of them and line them up and quickly switch between each one without that latency delay that's happening there because as soon as you get that silence in your ears you sort of lose what you were listening to before so it's hard to really hear very quickly the differences between each of them so it gives you an idea but if you really want to go in deep to what exactly each one of these sounds like then um, that would be my suggestion would be to bounce out the song using each one of the settings and then do your own comparison without that pause in between. So that covers all the settings off there. Hopefully um, that is giving you some great knowledge there. All right, so there you go. That's the Isotope Maximizer portion of Ozone 8. Uh, if you've got the advanced version, then as I've done it, you can run it in the independent uh, plug-in version. But if you don't have the advanced version, then uh, you are limited to uh, having it contained in the overall plug-in chain of your Ozone uh, process. But uh, that's fine. It can still be done uh, in the same manner. It just can't be done in a separate plug-in as it is. So try that out on your next mix or master, whatever you want to call it, and see how it sounds with uh, getting your volumes up there and uh, providing that last little bit of limiter. So hopefully it's been helpful. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.